Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode eight of Network Chat Programming. So last time, which was a while ago, we left off with having this pretty cool window here where the user could enter their name, you know, an IP address. So like local host, for example, and a port like 8192, for example, like we have here. Then they could hit the login button and uh, presumably, you know, the client logs in and they're treated with this window. Um, and today we're gonna talk about a few things. We're probably going to um, talk about actually passing this data into a actual login thing. So you can see that we pass it in here, but um, we'll more or less talk about that a bit further. And also, um, first thing I wanna fix up here is uh, this request focus thing. Like, um, you know, what happens is when we kind of launch this application, and we log in, you know, whatever, yarn, localhost, 8192, then we hit log in, like the user can't type straight away, right? There's no focus on this. Um, and it's pretty easy to actually request focus. After we hit the set visible true, okay, straight after that, we, have, we actually have to type the component we want. So text message is the name of our um, text field and uh, request uh, focus in window, okay? That's the proper way to do it. Request focus is a bit, um. It, it, it works, but it's more or less platform dependent, it might not work for all circumstances. And this also will not request focus to the window, just the component in the window. So if you minimize or something, it's not gonna um, appear at you and harass you. <laughs> so Cherno local host 8192. If we hit login, what we should see is, as you can see, the window is straight away. Uh, the message window is available for us to type straight away. So cool. Um, now let's talk about how we can get the send button right now, or when the user hits enter, how we can actually get that to post something into this text history, because this is a text history. In fact, what we want to have here is a way to write to this as like a console, okay? So we might want to display a message being like, blah, 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 logged in at this time, or connection successful, or connection failed, or connection retrying, you know what I mean? Like a console kind of window, so that the user knows what's going on. Um, so let's talk about doing that now. So what we have is this awesome text history, which is a JTEXT area. And we need a function here in our client.java uh, class. Now remember client.java is more or less a, um, it's it's our window, okay? It's not actually probably gonna contain any of the, um, the code to actually send messages and receive messages and stuff. It's probably just gonna be there um, for the purpose of displaying our window as a graphical interface. Um, and because of that, all of our methods that actually write to the console should be here. Um, so we'll just make a public method here, um, a public void. We'll call it, um, uh, let's see, it's client dot. We could call it console, okay? Um, and this will be like a right line kind of um, print line to the console thing. Um, and then we'll print whatever we want, so string message or string text. Um, and then what we wanna do here is simply type text uh, area. I think it's called text history dot, um, that's not it. Okay, well, it is, it's just not global. So make sure we take the text area here and we actually, um, let's copy that and then let's get rid of the text area here. And then we'll paste what we just copied into the top here. So private and then JTX area text history. That will make it global for this class, uh, which is good here. And make sure it's private because we don't need to be accessing it from anywhere else. So text history dot, come on, give me some, Oh, there we go. Oh, it's text R history. Why is it text R history? Anyway, um, I guess because it's a text area. I don't know why we called it that. But anyway, um, text area dot append uh, and then our message, okay? Um, now what this will do is append whatever we want into the um, into the actual console. So let's test that out real quick. When we do create this, um, and this is in the create window thing here, um, what we want to do is let's just type in uh, text R history dot, um, no, hang on. We just made a method for that. Uh, let's type in console and then we can um, type in something like successfully connected, you know, even though we don't know if it's successfully connected or not, let's just type that in anyway. So again, we'll go yarn localhost 8192, hit login and you can see that it says successfully connected now and that's really cool. Now what happens if we try to do that again? Okay, what if we do two lines? So console and then let's do another line and we'll call it uh, successfully disconnected. I don't know, just for fun. Um, let's hit up uh, that, hit login. Okay, you can see it's on the same line, not cool, right? We want we want everything to be on, the, on a different line. Um, so how can we do that? Well, if we go down over here, um, after append, we can actually add in fact, I'm not sure if append will actually have anything to do with that. Nah, it doesn't have anything in the Java doc. 
But um, if, if we actually append to this message literally here, if we just type in plus and then backslash uh, n backslash uh, r, that will actually give us, I was just thinking n is, n is new line, right? n is new line in consoles, r is um, more or less kind of the same thing. But if we try that out and we type in yarn localhost 8192, what we should get is you can see them on separate lines. And that is pretty cool. You probably don't need both of them there, slash n slash r. I'm not quite sure that slash n would work. I know slash r will, but you know, have both of them there for safety. Um, so now we've got a way to write stuff to the console, okay? Um, and that's pretty that's pretty cool, okay? So um, that's probably gonna wrap up this episode. What we're doing as well, which is actually um, kind of important here, is we're actually setting whatever our name is into these variables. So what I could do is in fact, well, let's do this quickly. Um, so uh, we could we could do something like um, attempting a attempting a connection uh, with, um, and then we could add the name here at. Uh, um, hang on, no. So attempting a connection with like yarn or something that doesn't really sound right, does it? Um, Attempting a connection for whatever. Um, no, hang on. <laughs> I am screwing up the English part of this, aren't I? Um, what sounds good? So attempting a, attempting a connection, I guess, to, and then our server, which is address at, uh, we could probably do uh, just a colon there, plus port, um, plus, you know, user, and then plus our name here, okay? And that, I guess that would look more or less correct here. Make sure we have a plus here as well. Okay, cool. So if we run this and we go yarn localhost uh, 8192, then what we should get is, as you can see over here, so attempting a connection to localhost 8192, um, use a yarn, okay? That's it. Um, and that basically just demonstrates that we actually have the ability to uh, do this stuff. Now, one thing, one other thing I want to cover because this episode's kind of short, and I, and I know you guys want to see content. Every time we uh, ex we basically hit the send button, we want to grab the everything we want. In fact, I might actually say that for a later episode because it is a bit more involved because we want stuff like um, the enter key to work. But um, what we'll cover next episode probably is this um, this text this text message history kind of thing. I think it's just called text message. But um, this this field, right? Let me just make sure you guys can see that. This text field, okay? Um, because we essentially want people to be able to type in like hi and then hit enter. We don't want them to be, we don't want them to hit send. Like they can obviously if they want to, but um, we want them to be able to hit enter. So we'll cover keyboard uh, listening into this field next time. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Network Chat Programming. If you did, please hit the like button. Again, same as with game programming series. If this hits 200 likes, I'll release one video per day. Not of this series, just one video per day in general of either the game programming or the network chat programming series. Uh, if it hits two likes, then I'll release uh, two videos per day, most likely one of each. Okay, so make sure you hit that like button if you guys did enjoy this video. Later, guys. <laughs>